see you back. Of course, all of our special guests, we're so glad to see y'all this morning. Some of returning guests, the new ones will also. So we're glad that you guys are here. Take the word of God, please, and turn with me to John chapter number 10. John chapter number 10. And I want to bring in a message this morning with God's hope entitled, I Am. I Am. We just sang a song about I Am. How God is who He says He is. He is deliverer. He is comforter. He is friend. He is eternal. He is for everlasting. He's all of these things. But right here in John chapter 10, He gives us three very clear descriptions about Himself. And I want to give those to you this morning in hopes that they'll be a blessing to your heart. And I also would hope that maybe if there's by chance someone here this morning lost and undone without God, that does not know the free pardon of sin, that does not know what it means to be born again. I've learned one thing living in this town, knocking on doors. You knock on the door, are you saved? And the answer is always yes. But you turn around and say, are you born again? They look at you cross-eyed and they have no idea talking about. It. And listen, the Bible says you must be born again. John 3, 3. At his own, at his own lips, Christ said, he must be born again. Marvel not by saying to me, he must be born again. And my friend, if you're not born again, then you're bound for hell. That's not pleasant preaching, but it's truth. Amen. Let's go here and look at the Bible in John chapter number 10. Begin reading to me good, please, in verse number 7. If any place say, Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own, who owns the sheep, are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf chaseth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep, and I am excuse me, and am known of mine. Let's pray. Shall we? Father, again, we love you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for a, a, for a progressive week this week, Lord, of the work next door, everything happening. Lord, thank you, Lord, for uh, those that uh, have been uh, touched, Lord, by this ministry here uh, through, through tracks this week, Lord, through uh, personal testimony, uh, God, by one-on-one -on -one conversation with folks. Lord, just thank you for all, that you're doing, all the work that you're doing here among us. God, we ask this morning, Lord, that you would help us now, God, that you would give me power to preach, Lord, give me strength from high. God, that I may preach the word of God in power and truth, or that may convict someone's heart, or not because of my word, but because of your words. Or may somebody, someone's life be changed today. We ask all this in Christ's name. His name we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to mark some things in your Bible, if you would, please. A look, if you would, in verse uh, number uh, 7. The Bible says, I am the door. Would you mark that phrase, please? I am the door. I have to mark that. Also, in verse 9, again, Christ says... I am the door. Would you mark that also in your Bible, please? Underline, box it, put a circle around it, something, notice, you know it's there. And also to have you mark something else in your too, please. In verse number 10, he says, I am come. I am come. Would you mark that, please? I am come. And then here in verse number uh, 15, in verse number, verse number 11 through 15, he says, I am the good shepherd. Would you mark that phrase, please? I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd in verse 11. And then also in verse uh, number uh, 14, if you would please mark, I am the good shepherd uh, once again. We have here that Christ gives himself three distinct characteristics concerning who he is. Uh, people have asked, well, who is Jesus? 
Uh, Nicholas said, who is this God that shall live, me, live you out of my hand? He asked his questions over on, on Mars Hill uh, when Paul stood there in Athens on the hill and said, listen, I, I, I noticed that you have an inscription here, the unknown God. Him I declare unto you. Yes. And he started that creation all the way across the Calvary and declared to them who he was. Have you ever wondered who he is? Have you ever wondered what Christ has truly done and what he sees himself as? And here we have three clear distinctives that God labels himself for us and for our understanding to know exactly who he is and what he has done for every individual on the face of the earth. I want to give you these three characters this morning and give you and how they relate to us and the Savior, our Lord, this morning. No one knows who please. He is the door. He is the door. Look in verse number 7 through 9 again. It says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Let's look here, please. I am the door. He is the door. The door, you think about a door. A door does two things. Either it lets something in or it keeps something out. And that door that Christ says, listen, I am the door of the sheep. Now, the Lord calls every believer a sheep. Now, why is that? Have you ever thought about a sheep? Now, I do this a lot in preaching, but a sheep has no fangs. A sheep has no claws. A sheep has no camouflage. I mean, it's a big, bright, white, woolly thing, right? It's kind of hard to hide, especially here in, south, in southeast Georgia, middle Georgia, where it never snows. Okay, you can't hide. It has no camouflage. It has no, uh, no, no instinct to defend itself. It solely and totally depends upon the shepherd for safety. Amen. Right. It always depends upon the shepherd to find pasture. It always depends upon the shepherd to find food, to find help, to find shelter. It is completely dependent upon the sheep. It's like there in Matthew, Matthew chapter 6 where it says, Why give thought for tomorrow? Let Margaret thought for herself. Why worry about things? The Lord knows what we have need of. But I want you to notice that every one of us that have walked through that door of salvation, that entering in of, of being born again, the Lord says, hey, listen, you are my sheep. And look here, if you would please, at what it says in verse number 8. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Listen, once you enter into the door of salvation, you become a sheep of God, a child of God. No one can steal you away from Him. Amen. The robber cannot come by and kill that. The robber cannot come by and take that from you. Satan can't rob you of your salvation. The world can't take you from your salvation. No one can to include yourself. Once you are saved, you are saved for all eternity. Amen. There was an entrance here that Christ grants to everyone that will simply come in and suck with his. Behold, I stand the door and knock. If I come in, I'll suck with him and he'll suck with me. Listen, he's given us an entrance. He's given you a way to get in. Well, preacher, it can't be that simple. Think about how you get in the door. Most doors, you turn a doorknob and you push it open and you pull it to you and you walk over the threshold and that threshold of that door in your life will determine heaven or hell. Can I just ask you a question? Would you, if you're not saved this morning, what is preventing you from stepping over the threshold of faith and just trusting God as your personal Savior? What is keeping you from stepping over that one little line and saying, No, oh Lord, I know I'm lost. I know I'm undone without God. I know I'm going to hell. Open the door and step over. It's not hard. Well, it can't be that easy. It is. Amen. Amen. By grace are you saved through faith. Yeah. Listen, you have to have enough faith to trust God that God says, I'll do what I'll do if you'll trust me. Yeah. And last time I checked, he's not failed on one single promise. Yeah. That's right. Not one. Not one. 
We're all still here. The Word of God is still here. He's alive and well. And everything's going exactly according to plan. Maybe not our plans, but His plans. Everything is going according to plan. We see here this door provides entrance. This door provides a way of escape. The door provides a way of escape. But how do I escape? Listen, you escape hell all open to this door. Yeah. And you gain heaven. Yeah. You escape hell and you get to enter into the glorious kingdom of God. Yes. Now I don't know about you. Paul tells us some by, some by fear, some by persuasion. We've seen these folks say, and I'm paraphrasing that verse there. But he says, listen, he says, there's some that hear about how hot and how horrible and how and how much and how bad hell is. That's enough to convince them. Uh-huh. It worked for me. Amen. I'll never forget Dr. Carl Warden. We were in Woodbine Baptist Church in Woodbine, Georgia. It was a summertime revival. I was 10 years old. Late night, and he would take, man, he turned red. His bank had been about that far out here. He was spitting and slobbering. And every tie was on I mean, he's just laying it down. The whole thing was about how people were going to go to hell and die without Christ unless they got saved. And how bad hell was, how awful hell was, and how that I was going. Because God said, hey, hey, Daniel, yeah, you know not from you? Hey, son, you're lost. My heart began to be out of my chest. I let a conviction. went home that night, couldn't sleep, crying like a baby. I didn't know what to do. I went and got dad. said, I'm going to hell. He took a Bible and showed me how to be saved. I asked you a question. Why won't you step over the threshold? Yeah. Why won't you step over why put it off any longer? Right. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. Yeah. And listen, you say, well, we're all at church. Say, well, that don't mean you're saved. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a church member. That don't mean you're saved either. Right. Well, I got baptized. Well, good for you. You got wet. But are you truly a born again believer? Or are you counting on those three things or other things to get you to heaven? It's not going to work that way. It doesn't work. I don't care how active you're in church, how active you used to be in church, or what you're doing now. It does not matter. If you are not a born-again believer, hell will be your home. Amen. Listen, if, listen, the Lord loves you. He bled and died for you. Back in fact, John 3, 16, the old, probably the most well-known verse in all the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the gospel in one verse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He loves you so much, he died for you. Yes, amen. He died for you. Yeah. We see here there's a door. It's I am the door. Thus tell us that he is the only way to heaven. Amen. Listen, you can follow that academic crowd if you want to. You can get involved in all that mess if you want to. And listen, tell you something. All roads don't lead to heaven. That's right. They might lead to Rome, and Rome got, Rome got burnt down. Rome didn't last very long, and I don't want a road that leads to heaven like that. It's not going to last very long. Listen, I don't want a road that leads to God, and Him only narrow is the way, and broad is the way to destruction. There's one way to God. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. Amen. There ain't no penance to be paid. There ain't no praying to buy you to heaven. There's, there's, there is no purgatory. You live, you breathe, you die, you meet God. Now, how are you going to meet God this morning? On this side of the threshold or on that side of the threshold? It's up to you. We see here's the door. I am, because I am the door, I am the one that came, I am he that came. Look here at verse number 10. It says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Let me go ahead and tell you something. Satan is not on your side. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He's not. Listen, let me, let me tell you something. The soul is priceless. That's right. The soul of mankind is priceless. Yeah. You cannot put a soul on it. Now, it is so valuable and so sought after that both God and Satan both want it. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Think about that for a minute. If Satan can have you, he'll have you. That's right. He will wreck and ruin your life. You might have all the wealth, all the cars, all the houses, and you can climb that ladder of worldly success just to reach the top of your deathbed and look back and say, listen, I had my ladder leaned against the wrong building. Amen. That's right. You will be successful. You want to have a good life. You want to live right and be blessed to live for God. That's right. If you're not saved, get saved. That's 
We see here, he says, listen, verse 10, the thief, Satan, come not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come. So look, there's a comparison, a contrast. So this guy wants you wreck, ruin, disaster, destruction, but I want you. So I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. More abundant life? Take your Bible, hold your place there, John. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, quickly. Ephesians chapter 2. Let me show you something right here. All right, look at this. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning in verse 20. Right there? That's what it says. And you have been quickened, which means made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation or our behavior in times past, uh, in, in, in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Notice verse 4, the very first word. What's it say, church? But, but God. But God. <laughs> but God, who is rich in His mercy, for His great love, wherewith He loved us, John 3, 16, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are you saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the age to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his, in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourself, but is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Yes. Do you realize that before you got saved, you were a walking dead man? Yes, man. <laughs> you were a walking dead man. You might have been breathing God's good air. You might have been uh, living life. You might have had all the things you wanted and, and all that kind of stuff, but you were dead on the inside. Right. See, that's what happened when Satan told Eve, Thou shalt not should die. She didn't drop dead right there. But she died spiritually. Yes. Right. Immediately. Yes. Immediately. Right. Amen. Of course, physical death is part of that as well. Yes. But listen, he says in John, he says, The thief was not but for to kill, for steal, to kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life. Life. I'm already living for now. You think you this. You think you, have, you, you think you got the world by the tail. Everything's going your way, but on the inside, you're dead. Amen. Dead in his bones. You're dead, you're, you're dead on the inside. No life whatsoever. You're miserable. There's no joy. There's no happiness. And you keep seeking the things in the world to fill the void. Listen, on the inside of every person, according to John chapter 1, verse 9, the Bible says that he lighteth every man that cometh in the world. That means that every human being born, past, present, and future, is born with an innate nature inside of them that knows that there's something bigger than them outside of themselves. Amen. And with that knowledge comes a void. That's right. And with that void comes a search. And with that search comes grabbing and snatching and trying to fill a God-shaped hole in your heart that the world cannot fill for you. Amen. Only you can fill it. Only God can fill it. Excuse me, you can't fill it. Only God can fill it. I just spoke to Excuse me, pardon me. You can try and try and try and try. But it won't work. You can put money in there, a good family in there, a good job. You, you can put you can put non wicked things in there, and it's not going to fix it. That's right. It's not going to fix it. We see here. So I'm going to come. And he may, that you might have life, and that they might have it more abundant. Think about that for a minute. What is more abundant life? You ever met somebody? It looks like all the red on their life probably has been licked off. Yeah. I mean, just like they ate a sack full of lemons. Just, just not happy, no joy, beat down, depressed. Just, I mean, just, just, they've been wrung out. 
and just put up. Nobody loves them nothing. You know what they, you know what they, you know what they don't have? Joy. Yeah. Yeah. Where, listen, happiness is a byproduct of joy. And joy comes from who? The Lord. The Lord. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So if you don't have the Lord, then you're not going to be happy. Amen. 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 Listen. Things make us happy. You ever heard the old saying, money can't buy happy, it can buy a boat, a truck, and all the kind of stuff, right? Sure, it can. But guess what? That stuff breaks down. Mm-hmm. It messes up. It costs you more money. Yep. Yep. You're fussing <laughs> because you got to pay insurance on it, or pay this on it, or this or that. <laughs> it's a burden. True joy is not burdensome. Yeah, that's right. right. True yeah. happiness is not burdensome. Yeah. The Lord is never a burden. That's right. Right. And if you don't have Him, then you're not going to be happy. Right. Zion right. has come that you might have life, and you might have it more abundantly, overflowing, filling the top, all that you can handle. Hey, guess what? Just being happy. And I believe that God's people ought to be the happiest people ever. Yep, that's right. Right. Listen, I have more fun asleep than most of y'all have awake. The Lord's been good to me. I mean, I'm happy. I'm content. I got everything I need. The Lord's been looking at me about this for years and years and years and years and years. It has blessed us tremendously. Let me tell you something, though. I have life inside of me. Yep. I have abundant life living. Then one day it can come out. It can be a, a flowing well so others can see, hey, there's something different about him. There's something different about her. That's right. What is it? Oh, we have abundant life. Well, what is that? Let me tell you what that is. Start about Amen. We Amen. see here that we have he says, I am the door. I am come. And the reason he came was to give us life mm-hmm. for all that we accept him. Hey, God's not racist. Amen. Amen. And I'm fixing to blow everybody's mind. God's not white. Amen. That's right. <gasps> he's not blonde headed and blue eyed. Right. He's a Jew. Yeah. He's got olive colored skin, dark hair, and dark eyes. That's right. Give that what one of the Bible says. Uh-huh. He's a Jew. That's right. Okay. All right. Oh, y'all hear about Barnes Noble? I'm going I'm I'm to hop on a, I'm going to tell a rabbit real quick. Okay, we'll shoot him or eat him. Okay, I promise you. We'll get him, catch him, skinny. him. Barnes and Noble took every Bible off the shelf yesterday. Oh. Because they said, the Bible says there's no such thing as racism, and that's a lie. Uh-huh. They called the Word of God a lie. Now, what they don't know is that science in 2016, through the Human Genome Project and Ancestry.com, have y'all done that before? Anybody done that before? Okay. Do a little swab thing and send a lot. Did y'all do that? Okay. When you did that, you signed over your DNA to the government. In case you didn't know that. And what they did is they took that DNA along with everybody else that did that, and they discovered one thing. You know what it was? That it all came from two people. That's right. Now, for 2,000 plus years, God's been saying, hey, y'all came from Adam Eve. That's right. But yet science, the Bible has proved science, science finally caught up with it, but yet they call it a lie. Yeah. Listen, I have a daughter. My wife, look, my wife is blonde headed and blue eyed. At least she was blonde headed and blonde headed before she got married. It's gotten, dark, it's gotten darker over the years. It's gotten not light, it's gotten darker. Listen, we, we are as white as day is long. But my middle daughter has dark skin than we both do. Mm-hmm. There's, listen, there's one race, the human race. In fact, science calls it the adamant gene. Yeah. Amen. Look it up, Google it, it's all there. Yep. All right? So how can they say the Bible is a lie? Listen, God is not a respecter of person. Amen. He will save anybody that will not go to his head. I want to be saved. Yes, right. I believe you. I trust you. I want you. Amen. I think it's, I think it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Amen. Amen. We see here this, I, I am the door and I am come. And then lastly, says, I am the shepherd. I am the shepherd. Aren't you glad that God doesn't save you and then throw you the wolves? Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Yay. It's a great thing, isn't it? You Yay. see, you look at verse number 11, the Bible says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd. 
Not just, not just a shepherd, or, but I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for sheep. But he does a hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own whose owns sheep are not, seeth a wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth him, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Listen, when God saves you, God stays with you. He leads you, He guides you, He directs you. This morning, I want you to see the progression, if you would please. So here we have it. We have, it says, I am the door of the sheep. I'm the gate. So when the sheep come through the gate, we come through the gate of salvation, we are now, his sheep are now saved. All right? Christ. And then he says, I am come, which might have life more abundantly. He then gives you life more abundantly through that salvation, through that daily walk with God. But this, I am the good shepherd. And that tells me a whole lot about the shepherd. The shepherd, again, is the one that leads, guides, directs, protects, shelters, Listen, the leading of God is not some fairy tale thing. That's right. Yeah. But here's, here, here's the harsh reality about us following God in our Christian lives. Is most of us don't know what his voice sounds like. Yeah. 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 Look here with me, please. The Bible says in verse number 27 of the same chapter, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Do you know the voice of God this morning? Mm. I've, been, I've been asking this question a lot. It's, God is bringing me back to John a lot this past month, the past few weeks. I don't know why. It may be that somebody is awake and know what God's voice sounds like. Yeah. It may be that somebody's playing around thinking they're safe, thinking they're going to heaven, and reality they're not. You might want to check up on yourself a little bit here. You might want to ask God, God, am I truly born again, or am I trusting in something else, or, or maybe it's somebody battling to make a decision, but yet they don't even hear the voice of God in their life. Listen, I, they hear my voice, and they know me, and they follow me. As you just wanted to hear the voice of God, we see here again, I am the shepherd. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. They know me. They follow me. I protect them. Look here, good please, in verse um, number 9 again. So I am the door. Uh, by, uh, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Listen, how many of you seen cows or sheep or any kind of animal like that lay it out in a pasture under a shade tree? You're driving down the road. And it's hot. You know, man, that sure does look restful. Man, that looks peaceful. Man, they look comfy. There's something about a patch, something about a patch with a fence around it, with nice grass in it, and a place just to rest a moment. I mentioned this several weeks ago. I can't remember exactly when. But over in the Gospels, Christ looks at the disciples and says, "I send you forth as sheep among wolves." Remember that verse? All right. Sheep have no defense. But here it says, they come in and out and find pasture. Let me be very clear here. That does not mean that you're in and out of salvation, right. in and out of, 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 of relationship with God. Or it simply means that God brings you back in to get recharged and sends you back out again to get to go see more people say it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you look at the person together. That's what it means. Yeah. Pretty simple, right? Listen, some of us are entitled and need just a little bit of rest and need some rest. Some of us have been going so long and so hard that every now and again it might be good to just go back to the, the shepherd and say, Lord, I need just a little bit of help. Yeah. Would you help me, please? Yeah. And some of us have had to do it all by ourselves. Yeah. We can't do that. Yeah. Christian, you're not meant to live the Christian life on your own strength. 
That's right. Not meant to make it just life on your own ability. There's a reason you have a shepherd. It's for him to guide you and to, and, to, and to protect you. And sometimes use that cane and get on to you. Amen. That shepherd's hook. And snatch you out of some stuff sometimes and bring you back. Know this. He is the good shepherd. I am. I am the door. I am come for these reasons and I am the good shepherd. Folks, we serve the best almighty, the only living, breathing God that there ever has been and there ever will be. Amen. And he tells us that, hey, I love you. I want you my fold. I want you as my sheep. I'm going to give you life abundantly, life everlasting, and I'm going to protect you and walk with you and not leave you to the wolves. Amen. If you can't get excited without that child of God, there's something wrong with you. I know this morning that I have a God that's looking down on me that knows exactly where I am, what my needs are, and He knows how He's going to give them. And I don't even know how it's going to happen. God says, hey, watch this. Take care of That's the God I serve. And that's the God that you could serve. It's the only trust me. Well, I don't like serving nobody. Listen. Listen. This is it like a nine to five. You clock in, you clock out. It ain't, ain't some taskmaster, some kind of dictator mentality. That's right. Yeah. The Lord will never make you serve Him. That's right. He won't. Yeah. But when you get saved, truly get saved, you're going to want to serve Him. That's right. That's right. After all He's done for you, yeah. our little bit of service on earth is nothing compared to what He did for us. That's, That's right. right. And I think we ought to remember that. Father, we love you. Well, thank you.